Hey guys, it's Sunday, so that's right, it's my day. Okay, so for today's topic, I put a lot of thought into it, and I finally decided, actually it was only like 15 minutes, but I decided that what I'm going to talk about is how music has declined since, uh, mm, I'm going to say, and I know a lot of you are going to disagree with me with, for, with this, but I'm going to say at least from 2005 on. Okay, so... Obviously, most people here have really good taste. I mean, obviously, Beatles collection, best collection ever. Um, but it's like, it's almost like music isn't music anymore. You know, especially with this new, new dub, dubstep thing. Like, what even is that? It sounds like a bunch of farts. Like, seriously, if I wanted to be a like, if I wanted to be a musician and go into dubstep, Jesus Christ, it'd be easy. All I, all I'd have to do is this. <laughs> That's all I'd have to do. And maybe just like a drop the bass. It's like not even music. I don't, I don't even think they make noise with their mouths with dubstep. It sounds like a 1990s computer starting up. Like seriously. And people listen to it and they think, wow man, this is great. Yeah, I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to sit down in front of my computer, eat my Evie's ice cream, and I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to have fun. And it's just like, what the heck? There's not even, like, appreciation for music anymore. There really isn't. I mean, like, nowadays, like, I know most of the time it's, like, people trying to be cool. But a, a few months ago, um, my friend and I were on, a, were in our ties class, which is basically, like, computer class. Um, and we were doing, like, this thing. Like, we had to learn how to, like, work with some Microsoft stuff. Even though, you know, me and my friend were computer nerds, so we already know how to do that. Um, and we had to do, like, you know, favorite artist, favorite type of, no, wait, not, that's not what it is. It was, um, oh, you had to do, like, different types of music and then put, like, um, pictures underneath of it. And me and my friend had finished, and we were, like, on, um, my email, we were, like, reading stuff from my English friend, because she's always fun to read, because she's into all stuff we are. And all of a sudden, a girl across the room goes, I've never, I don't even think I've ever listened to blues or... Uh, what it, what even is this kind of stuff? I think she was talking about classical, I don't even know. And me and my friend just look at each other like... Like that. And we were like, are you serious? And then the girl behind her goes, Don't worry. If you've never listened to any of this, then you're lucky. And we were like... Or, what? That's not even something that you say, okay? That's not a good thing to do. Like, music is when, like here. No, I'm not gonna do that, they'll be weird. Okay. Love for music, like real love, I'm, I don't wanna sound like weird or anything, but I think I've actually experienced like the, like what artists feel with music. Um, it was like around two in the morning last, this past summer, and I'd been looking for the intro to a Hard Day's Night, like, I've been looking for it everywhere. Like, I went on to this old uh, video chat that George, not, it was like a video, it wasn't even video, it was like just chat thing that George did right before he passed. And, um, someone said, what's the opening chord to A Hard Day's Night? And he listed it. And they went, uh, can you repeat that again? I don't know what that is. And he never repeated it. So obviously he didn't want, like, it to just be out there so everyone knew it. You know, that kind of thing that George probably would have done. Um, so I go into my Beetle book that I have of Raitia, and it says, hold on, bear with me, Hard Day's Night is, here it is, it says, a G7 Seuss 4, and I'm like, um, okay, I don't know how to play that, and it's a bar chord, so I'm like, um, okay, well, my fingers hurt when I do that, so I'm not gonna try that. So I was like, where am I gonna find this chord? And it's like 2 in the morning and I'm going through all these things and finally, what happens is... Yes, this is my guitar now. Let me make sure. Okay, so finally I found this finger arrangement. It's kind of like a, a D minor. And I was in my room, because my room is kind of quieter than in here, my computer room, and I just went... And there's like a literal uh, audible sigh when I do that. Um, and 
as I felt like the vibrations moving through the guitar, I literally got like kind of like a natural high, like the kind of thing that transcendental meditation gives you. And I was just sitting around my room going, yes, thank you, God, oh my gosh. And I had not been feeling good that week, week. like I had been like all sad and mopey and like, oh, life sucks, I found that off. Gonna pay, post this on my Facebook status, guys. And when I hit that chord, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, yay! Um, and I just kept doing that for about 15 minutes straight. I'm pretty sure if anyone had walked in on me, they would have put me in a straight jacket. Um, but I, that's real appreciation for music. Like every time I strum my guitar, I lean my head against the body of my guitar and I just listen to the rhythm, the, not rhythm, the vibrations inside just moving back and forth. And it's, it's beautiful. Like seriously, you can't do that with tub stuff. You can't sit next to a 90s Macintosh computer and go, oh guys, listen, it's starting up. Oh god, guys, it's beautiful. You can't do that. Like seriously, what happened to music? Like I like like I said, like most of you will disagree with me that it was from 2005 on, but there were some good stuff that there was good stuff that came out before 2005 that was on the charts. Like that song, like hey ya, hey ya. You gotta admit that has a hook. Like at least they put time in like to making a hook for it, you know. Stuff like Justin Bieber, like, that kid just annoys the living crapola out of me. Like, seriously, what the heck? He's a really bad influence on people. Like, seriously, I like One more one Direction better than him. Like, I don't like their music, but I think they seem like nicer kids than him. I never liked him. He just seemed like the kind of kid who just, I don't know, like, you know, like, I'm Justin Bieber. Like, I'm Justin Bieber. <laughs> I made a video making fun of him a little while ago, but, um, like, I don't usually like to make fun of people, and I don't really have, like, hatred for anyone, because I think hate's a really strong word, and you shouldn't hate any anyone, but Justin Bieber, yeah, I have a literal hate for him. Anyone who, when some guy comes up to him and says, Justin, my daughter really loves you, can you please sign her CD for it, and you slap that out of the guy's hands, no, okay, no. Not even- I mean, John Lennon could be a PRK at times, but he never did anything like that. I'm pretty sure. Maybe on his off days, but you know, he never did stuff like that, like, out in the open, like, getting off a plane. Like, for Christ's sake, he took a little girl that was a fan and carted her around, uh, Central Park on his shoulder. Like, Jesus, I mean, seriously. You don't do stuff like that, and you don't lock producers in closets of- what was he on, NCIS? I don't even know. Um, or smash cakes, or make a plane wait like an hour just so you can get good, good food. No, Justin, you have to eat the airline peanuts just like everyone else. Calm down, like seriously. It's just, and then Skrillex, what? You... I'm sorry, I just get so passionate about music. I'm a big music snob, I'll admit that. And, like, it's, it's just ridiculous seriously like how far down music has gone since like the 19th like I, I feel like it reached its peak in the 1960s and I'm like a chick who listens one minute I'll be listening to Led Zeppelin like Pearl Jam and the Beatles like throughout the whole day and then all of a sudden I'll turn on Vivaldi and go like and it's like, like seriously I'm that kind of person so I don't- I'm not like the kind of person who just likes rock and I, like with classical I'm like, ew, dude, turn this shit off. Like seriously, I don't do stuff like that. I give everyone a chance. Like when Justin Bieber first came around, I bought a few of his songs on iTunes and listened to them a few times just to see if maybe I would like them a little- no. Hated all of them. Hated all of them. Like seri- ugh, god. Whew. Um. Hmm almost 10 minutes into this video. What else should I talk about about how music has gone down? Okay, well, here's the thing. I think Adele, like, when I was uh, going through, like, a really, like, you know, the first, I just really, like, seriously discovered how great the Beatles seriously are. Like, not just like, oh, the Beatles just came on. Oh, I love these guys. No, it's like, oh, the Beatles. Like, stuff like that, you know. 
I just really gone into that phase. And I used to sit in bed at night and think, I'm, I'm going to be famous one day, and I'm going to bring back good music. Then Adele came around, and she was all, I'm 60s, and I'm loving it, yeah, and I'm all cool, and oh, rumor has it, ooh, you the rumor has it, and uh, run in the deep, you know, and stuff like that, and I was like, god damn you, god damn you. I was supposed to bring back good music. Like, I do think she's good. Like, seriously. Like, in Set Fire to the Rain, like, I didn't really like that song at first, but then I listened to it, like, fully on the radio. And at the end, like, it might just be Audition, but I don't think it is with her. Because she has a power powerful enough voice. At the end, she, like, you know, she belts out, and she, like, just goes, and I was like, good God. And... I was just like, wow. The other thing is, she doesn't dress inappropriately, and she's really into, like, looking like a woman. You know, like, I mean, I, like, you know, I love Keira Knightley and all, but she is so skinny, and I feel so bad, you know? Like, she has like, no chest, and she's just, like, so skinny. And I feel bad for her at times, because a lot of people must, like, make mean comments. I hate it when people think that skinny girls don't get any, like, rude comments towards them, because they do all the time. Like, I'm, like, freaking twiggy skinny, for Christ's sake. I'm only, like, 114 pounds. 112 when I use the bathroom. So, there's a lot of people who are always like, hmm, you're skinny. Hmm, you need to gain meat. And it's like, sorry if my metabolism is fast. It'll catch up with me one day. Someday I'll be, like, 400 freaking pounds, and you'll be, like, 2 pounds. And you can laugh at me then. I'll be eating Cheetos on the couch watching Dance Moms be like, you're a death bump. Uh-huh. And then you'll be running a mile and... <laughs> Seriously. And Jennifer Lawrence is good with that, too. The actress who played Katniss in The Hunger Games. She said in Seventeen, if I'm, like, when she was in X-Men, if I'm gonna be naked in front of the whole world, painted in blue, I'm gonna look like a woman. You know? It's, like, stuff like that. And I, I really appreciate that from Adele and Jennifer Lawrence. It's, like, girls, I think they've been talked into, like, skinny is pretty. Skinny is how you should look. And a lot of people blame Twiggy for that, and I don't think it was her fault at all. Because girls were skinny before her. I mean, Patty Boyd was skinny. And she was a, a model before Twiggy was. Twiggy just was really skinny. That wasn't her fault. She said several times, no, I like to eat steak and potatoes and everything that you think that I don't eat. It just doesn't go anywhere. Probably because, you know, she ate healthy and stuff like that. Like, people made all these comments. Anyway. But yeah, Adele, I think, is good. And I think... It's goatee. I don't know. That's what I'm calling him. Uh, G O T U I E. I think it, that's how it's pronounced. Somebody that I used to know. I think is a good song. I really do. I haven't really listened to the rest of his stuff yet, but a friend of mine on Facebook said he's good. So, um, so I'm not gonna have a song at the end of this because I'm almost, I almost reached my 15 minute limit. But, um, I like the flutes in somebody that I used to know where she was. Now and then I think of all the times you screwed me over. And then you hear the I think that's good. I also think Birdie's good. I don't know if you guys have listened to her, but um, I picked the way I discovered her was um, uh, I got into like magazines in like like September. I got my first uh, seventeen issue because I just you know I was getting into like mod and stuff like that, and I, I was like it's coming back. It has to come back. The sixties are coming back, and I gotta prove it to everyone and stuff like that. And um, and I remember the first time I read in there, this pleated skirt is totally cute, but the neon stripes make it look mod. I remember going, yay! And, you know, stuff like that. So I was reading a nylon magazine because it had a picture of uh, Diana Argon. I think that's how you pronounce her last name, from Glee. I don't really watch the show. Um, and she was wearing a pink dress with white lacy sleeves. And her hair was slicked back, and, you know, she had 60s makeup on. And I was like, I gotta read this. The whole thing was honoring the 60s. Like, it was pretty cool. Um, I'd look it up if I were you. Like, all these people were in it, and uh, Birdie was in it. She's 15. I'm gonna be 15 tomorrow, and I don't even I don't even have my own album yet, which I want. So bad I wanna have an album, and I wanna be famous. I wanna be famous for a few reasons, not just to be famous, but anyway, my video's ending soon. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the message of, of this uh, week's episode. Episode, yeah. My videos are now officially episodes. Um, it's gonna end in like 10 seconds. Okay, well, 
Bye, guys.